Some of the most well-known business names are Richard Branson and Elon Musk. They're famous because they combine a number of successful elements together. They're successful CEOs, but they're also brilliant entrepreneurs and they exercise wonderful and amazing leadership. I'm going to emphasize in our conversation on the two aspects of entrepreneurship and leadership and talk how they converge in many points, but in some areas they're not the same because they're different concepts. But to succeed, you need to exercise both of them. So let's start with what brings them together. The first obvious word is courage. You can't exercise leadership without courage. At the same time, you can't exercise entrepreneurship without courage. You need a lion's heart to venture into both enterprises. If you don't have that kind of heart, forget about entrepreneurship. Why is this important? Because both of them also work in the sphere, in the universe of risk. Both leadership and entrepreneurship are exercised in a situation where risk is a dominant element. One of the main element differences between a, an entrepreneur and a regular businessman is not the different economic background or the different business rules. It's the same. The macroeconomics of both cases is the same. But what makes an entrepreneur different from a classical business person is an entrepreneur has the courage to exercise, to take risks more than a classical businessman. So the risk tolerance is much higher. And that's what makes them different. And that is also, that coincides with leadership because the context of leadership is also a context of risk. Why is risk? Because it involves experimentation. You know for sure how entrepreneurs, at least most entrepreneurs, experience failure to the greatest extent. Most entrepreneurial ideas fail. The ones you hear about in the media, these exceptional, amazing, inspiring story, these are the exceptions. Branson and Elon Musk, these are exceptions. There are thousands and thousands, even more, of attempts, of entrepreneurial attempts that take place every year. But they fail. Some people say it's 90%, some people say it's 95% failure uh, um, percentage. But it doesn't matter. The, 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 the nature of entrepreneurship is that it's a, it's, a, it's a risky attempt to start a business or to start an idea, to translate it into um, something that is real, solid, with a very high risk that will most probably fail. Entrepreneurs also, just like in exercising leadership, they seek solutions to problems. So what's an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur comes from one or two points. Either they spot a problem and they come up with an with a innovative or a smart solution to it, or they come up with an idea that makes life easier. It's not, it doesn't solve a problem, but it makes let's say, a certain practice, it, it handles an area of life and makes it easier. So they both try to present new solutions, either to make life easier or to open new opportunities. The same goes with leadership, because what leadership is all about is about mobilizing people, helping them so that they can solve their problems, overcome their obstacles, and create opportunities. How do they do that? By offering solutions. So they both seek solutions. Not only that, they also ensure that there is a sound and solid execution of these solutions. Because there's no use, I mean, what use, what good is a, good, is, is a solution if it's not executed properly? Because execution makes the difference between something that becomes real or something that, be, that remains as a concept or an idea. Entrepreneurs also, just like people who exercise leadership, have high tolerance for stress. Not just failure, not just risk, stress. And let me share, let me tell you something. If you 
can't make stress your friend, not even friend, your best friend, your partner, your roommate. I'll tell you why roommate. Don't even go into entrepreneurship or leadership. I use the example of roommate because, listen, you will wake up with pain in your stomach. You will wake up with that feeling. Will I succeed or fail? Now, why is this important? Because you've invested as an entrepreneur, you've invested time, you've borrowed money, you've committed people, you've made contracts, you've, you've established an entire network, and that took God knows how much effort. So you, you live constantly with the, with the nightmare of whether this is going to work or not. And every morning you wake up questioning yourself, did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Most of the time, the answer is no, because there is the fear element. So both cases, entrepreneurs and people who exercise leadership go through the same dynamic and live with stress and live with fear all the time because they're dealing with uncertainty. And without this tolerance to uncertainty, you can't go into both universes. It's a very hard thing to be an entrepreneur. I'm telling you, it is, if, if you want peace of mind, stay away from leadership and stay away from entrepreneurship. These stories that you see on social media, you know, people who become millionaires and billionaires, this is, it's an illusion. This is like one in a million, literally one in a million story. Now people get excited and, you know, I want to be like that. They don't know that behind all this, what they see, you know, what looks like a happy picture, is years of torture, is sleepless nights, is, is stress, is exhaustion, is, it's a nerve-wracking environment. It's the same thing for, uh, for leadership. So they both converge and share these characteristics. And you have to keep them in mind before you jump into this into this situation. And of course, in the social media, they don't tell you about all these people who succeeded, who went bankrupt, you know, who gave up, who end up, I don't know, who broke their relationship, end up divorced, they broke up with their partners, uh, they isolated themselves from their environment. They don't talk about all of that, which is a consequence of the stress and the difficulty of this, of this adventure. So what they show you is the happy part. But that's, that, that's, that's a fairy tale approach to entrepreneurship and leadership because both of them are also messy. Entrepreneurship is messy. There's no clean entrepreneurship. Leadership is messy. And you have to live within that mess. Now, not only live, you have to learn within that mess because, because of the high level of uh, failure, because of the high level of experimentation, right? So what happens is that you're constantly facing new situations with new outcomes and you have no choice but to learn because you can't repeat the same mistakes. And if you want to, it becomes expensive. So both of them are in the learning business. So if you don't have an open mind, flexible mind, if you're not adaptive so that you can absorb all this and learn from it and stand up again on your feet, whether you're exercising leadership or you're engaged in entrepreneurial activity, forget about the whole thing. Another element that brings them together is persistence. If you're in the business of giving up, forget about leadership and forget about entrepreneurship. You can't give up, at least not easily. I like a story once I read, um, a small group of people, they tried, to, they tried, they developed a software. The software that, was, was, that succeeded was version 812. Imagine if they had given up at 811. Just imagine. All the effort, the investment, the emotional cost, the financial cost, the social cost, the time, you name it. All of that would have been wasted had they stopped at attempt 811. Because they moved to 812 through persistent they succeeded. Of course, their success translated into you know, a successful business and a multi-million dollar um, business um, enterprise. But that's also an exception. Why am I saying it's an exception? Because it takes special kind of people with that kind of internal, emotional, and intellectual, and mental strengths to go through this painful journey to success. Otherwise, most people give up halfway. That's the difference between 
you know, successful entrepreneurs and non-successful entrepreneurs. Ba maybe both have great ideas and they both start, right, and they go on. But who succeeds? Those who succeed are those who persist and stay to, till the end. And that is not easy because it's a journey of pain, of disappointment, of frustration, of embarrassment, because you're just failing and failing and failing. Now, you're lucky if you're surrounded by you know, a support structure that's really cheering for your success. But is this reality? It's not reality. Most of the time, 90 people or 90% 90 of the people around you, they're either you know, making, you know, they're making fun of you or, or they, you know, they, 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 they act in a way that discourage you or they bring their spirit, your spirit down. So it's, it's, it's in that context. And people who persist, right, they stay and they survive and they grow. After persistence comes resilience. You have to have resilience. And the core of resilience, as we said, is, in, is emotional and spiritual, mental strength. Your self from inside, your core self, has to be really, really strong. Otherwise, people will bring you down and your own fears will bring you down. One day you wake up and say, you know what, I can't take this anymore all the effort that you put in the past would have been lost and also the, the possible the potential of the future will also be lost that's why confidence is an important issue confidence is important because why is that because you need to stay in the game and if you don't have at least a minimum level of self-confidence then what would what would make you stay because the whole environment is dotted with doubt the whole environment is doubt. You're doubting yourself all the time. People around you are telling you, are you sure it's a great idea? A hundred people around you say, I told you so, it's not going to work, you know? So countless messages of discouragement. What brings also entrepreneurship and leadership together is the aspect of mobilization. The core of leadership is mobilizing people so that they can fulfill a good purpose. And that purpose is either solve a problem that was pulling them back, or create an opportunity that will push them forward. Now, in entrepreneurship, it's the same thing, because you can't do it alone. That's a very important point. You can't succeed in entrepreneurship alone. You might have the greatest idea ever. But you can't do it alone. You need investors. You need partners, maybe. You need a minimum nucleus of staff around you. And these people have to believe in you. That's where, that's where inspiration comes into play. Because one of the main tools of mobilization, either in entrepreneurship or in leadership, is inspiration. And that is to lead by example. So people will have to see you, be inspired by you, so that they can join you and accept to, to embark on the same journey of risk that you're taking. When these people join you to, to become part of your, your, your team, they're taking a big risk because what if the whole project fails? And I'm sure there are people around them, their friends or colleagues, you know, in their own social system are telling them maybe they've, they're, they're being crazy to join such a wild idea. And they're advising them, why don't you go to, you know, work for a bank or work for the UN or work for the government or work for, you know, some very solid organizations. So they're hearing all of that in their own environment. But what keeps them in the game, what makes them take the risk to join you is the fact that you have been is is that you're inspiring them is they're inspired by you and to inspire them you need also to create enthusiasm so you have to keep pushing um, um, energy into the team i'll just share with you a brief example you know the, the the space program the missile or the rocket program that elon musk um, has created and over the years i've been following from a leadership and entrepreneurial uh, point of view, what's happening in his company. 
because it's a great case study and this is at the core of my you know research and scholarly expertise entrepreneurship strategy and leadership you know and and related subject so in one case they invested so much in one kind of a rocket and um, unfortunately when it it was launched a few seconds later it blew up i was watching this on um, on TV or on YouTube, I don't remember. But what I saw is um, the entire atmosphere, the entire mood in the control room where they are monitoring um, the way the rocket is going up. You know, hundreds of people behind screen, you should see how their spirit dropped. You know, it's like, uh, it's like they've been, it's like you, energy have been sucked out of their, sp their soul. And you can, I mean, it's, it's understandable because God knows how many hours, sleepless nights, effort, dreams, hopes have been invested into making this succeed. What happens? Elon Musk comes into the room and he says, so what? Let's learn from this and try again. I don't want to see these faces. Let's start. Go to the drawing board and start again. It took seconds for the entire mood to change 180 degrees. And people started clapping and cheering because of the, en of the energy and enthusiasm that he injected in a team that was feeling completely depressed, sad, emotionally collapsed after when, when they saw all this effort disappearing. That's how you inspire people. That's how entrepreneurs inspire people. And that's what they share with leadership. Because leadership also is a journey of difficulty. It's an endurance reign into the unknown, into a universe of risk and disappointment and frustration and experimentation until you get it right. You need to be resilient and strong so that you can inspire not only on your behalf but on behalf of your team so that they stay in the game otherwise they'll give up it's already everything in their mind all the voices are telling them leave 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 abandon ship this is too risky this business is going to die go jump ship find something that's more secure so as you can see there are many areas where entrepreneurship and leadership they join hands and they converge together. We can go much deeper into this and talk you know, for a much longer time. We can still talk about communication, how both of them need to be great communicators because how can you inspire and, and introduce a feeling of enthusiasm if you don't know how to communicate? You know, we can talk about vision. How can you inspire without having a vision as an entrepreneur? You have to use, you know, your artic a beautiful articulation of your vision for the future so that you can attract people. Because you go to investors and bankers, you know, and partners, potential partners, and all what you have is an idea, is a vision. If you don't have a strong vision and you don't articulate it well, how will they believe in you? Because there's nothing behind you, you're starting from scratch, and you're selling them an idea that is not tested before, it's a new idea. That's why you're an entrepreneur, because you're not copying something that already exists. Otherwise, you're just a classical business. You're repeating what has been done and tested before. You see? So we can go on and on talking about this. It's a fascinating world. Uh, both of them, entrepreneurship and leadership. The reason I'm sharing all this with you, because I want you to know what are you getting yourself into. If you have an entrepreneurial idea, well done. More power to you. I salute you because it's a reflection of your dream. It's a reflection of your eagerness to progress and to move forward and to improve your situation and to bring good ideas. And it's a reflection of the courage that you have. That's wonderful. But also you have to be realistic and know in advance the nature of the journey, of the terrain that you're throwing yourself into. If you have that caliber, if, you're, if you have what it takes, then good for you. In fact, the world needs entrepreneurs as much as it needs also, you know, acts of leadership. Because look around you, all, everything that is technology and other than technology, everything that started, started
started as an entrepreneurial idea. In fashion, remember Coco Chanel, how it started. In technology, you know, the iPhone, smartphone, iPad, SpaceX, Amazon, all of these aspects of life that we're currently, you know, enjoying Uber, Airbnb, I mean, you name it. All of these start IBM. Okay, Ford. Ford is not a new company. It's an old company. But how do you think it started? Because Henry Ford, the founder, more than 100 years ago, had an entrepreneurial idea. And he had a vision. He had a dream to make the automobile, the car, affordable enough to become available to the masses. Now it's a classic, you know, century old maybe company. But it started as an entrepreneurial idea. So if you have that kind of spirit, go for it. And I wish you all the best. But remember what we talked about. And listen to this session many times. And make sure that you're ready and you have prepared yourself to deal with all the aspects uh, that we have talked about because these are the fundamentals of a successful entrepreneurial spirit. I'm going to end with just explaining a small difference between both of them and how both of them are not, re are not exactly the same. They're related but not the same. Because most, most of the time, or it's a common mistake that people comb use them interchangeably as if they're the same thing. They're not. One of the reasons why some entrepreneurs fail is because they don't know how to exercise leadership. What's entrepreneurship? You have a great idea, or what you think is a great idea, right? And what you want to do is turn this idea into a reality that could be a sustainable, viable business that could be monetized. These are important elements because the world is full of ideas. But not every idea gets to be executed and not every execution gets to be sustainable right, and profitable so that it, it remains sustainable and it turns to be into a solid business. So one of the reasons why these things fail, these attempts fail, is because of the lack of that person or whoever is, is engaged in entrepreneurial activity in, in, um, in exercising leadership. What's leadership? Leadership is about change, is about constructive change, is about transformation. That's what leadership is, it's about mobilization. So they have the great idea and they have many aspects of the components of the puzzle. But when it comes to the ability to mobilize which is what leadership is about, to create change, which is what leadership is about, to create transformation, which is what leadership is about, they lack that element and they fail. That's one of the reasons. There are other reasons also, there are many other reasons. And this might happen at an early stage and it might happen at a later stage because there are many cases also where they succeed in having a startup but then they don't have what it takes to turn it into a solid company because the requirements of running a solid company after it becomes solid, if, after it takes off, are different from its startup phase. You know, running a team of five people or 10 people is different than running a company of 10,000 people. Having a small office operation in a garage or a small office, humble place, is different than running a, an operation that is multinational, that has um, factories and offices established in several continents, so sometimes in, in dozens of cities. There's a complete different set of skills. And success requires is that you take the whole idea from startup to implementation, execution, you know, and then growth phase into stability all through the whole process. Now, if you have the entire, you know, set of skills, then you become like Branson and Elon Musk. But not all of us are like this still it's reality. So where they diverge is when it comes entrepreneurship and leadership is when it comes to the ability to manage and create and change, continuous change and to transform. Apart from that, uh, they're twins. I see them twins and they need each other. 
Leaders also, leadership also requires an entrepreneurial thinking. Because what's leadership? You have an idea about how to make a situation better. And that's entrepreneurial. Th that's entrepreneurial thinking. And you take this idea to the masses and you mobilize them so that they buy in the idea. And you inspire them to go through this journey of risk because it just starts with an idea. We can do better. We can make our country better. We can make our company better. We can make our club, our organization, our family better. All of these are, this is leadership talk. The idea behind that is that you have a vision. You have a clear purpose. You have an entrepreneurial mindset that is all about turning a vision, a, um, a, a, a kind of reality that you have in your mind, that's a better reality than, than now, into a fact. So entrepreneurs need to exercise leadership to succeed. And at the heart of leadership also is entrepreneurial thinking. Um, to summarize, if Elon Musk and Richard Branson inspire you, then you're on the right track. Just know that to get to that level, you need to have what it takes. Is it possible? Yes. But it needs hard work. But that's what commitment, you know, responsibility, ambition, leadership, discipline, strong will, it's all about. You have all of these together and you're on the way to success. Good luck. Thank you.